Hi, my name is Cameron Finley, and welcome to Good Evening KU. Hi, I'm Alison Moore. And so this week, um, oh sorry, last night, KU played West Virginia. They won 75-65. I know I didn't go to the game, and... I watched the game on ESPN in my dorm room. Yep. Um, what was your favorite part of the game? Um, well, Lane and Lucas had this killer dunk with an assist from Perry Ellis. I don't know if anyone else saw that, <laughs> but the whole like crowd just went wild at yeah. that. And he had a pretty big night apart from that as well. I think he set a career high for rebounds. Yeah. Um, speaking of KU basketball, you saw your first game last week, mm -hmm. didn't you? Last Wednesday against K-State, which was a giant rivalry. Yep. And people said that the game wasn't as heated because K-State isn't as good as basketball as you know KU, obviously. But it was a memorable game, definitely. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, there was that issue at the end where Brennan Green threw down the dunk and everyone went a little crazy about that. Yep. So, um, K-State fans weren't too happy about that. No, but what did you think of the experience? I know we were talking before the show last week about all of the traditions and stuff. How did you find that? It was pretty weird, to say like the least. At first, you know, with the whole newspaper, you had to like, it's like arts and crafts, like 15 minutes before <laughs> the game. And so everyone's just sitting down making these cones of newspapers yep. and ripping them up. And it's just very odd to like ever be like a part of this and then you like go and just throw it up everywhere and it's like sprinkles of newspaper just stuck in people's hair and it was so bizarre to be a part of that but also at the same time very cool. And I know the waving the weed and the chanting was also a big <laughs> part of the experience. Yeah, you're like um, hugging people next to you and like swaying back and forth, chanting rock chalk. I mean, that's a little bit different, but also really cool. But you're also going to um, your first game in a few weeks yeah. against Texas Tech, right? Yeah, so the Texas Tech game at home in the field house, that'll be my first game watching KU. So all the things you talked about, I'm a little nervous <laughs> about. I'm a little scared about getting newspaper in my hair because... It'll probably look like I have dandruff, so that'll be a new <laughs> But then experience. everyone, everyone has newspaper everywhere, so yeah, you'll just so blend in. I'll just fit in perfectly, and then I'll get back to my dorm room, and everyone will be like, he's been at the game. Yep. Do you have your, like, KU gear, a jersey, you know um, what you're going to wear? No, I don't, so I want to pick up a gear. I found out you can't get your own number, so I'm going to have to go and find uh, Landon Lucas's number now, oh, I think, because mm -hmm. last night was a pretty eye-opening experience. Yeah. And I know we've got a big game this weekend way before the Texas Tech game against Oklahoma yeah. um, to determine where we're going to be in the Big 12 going for first. Mm -hmm. That sounds like an intense game because we're both kind of tied with them, right? Yeah, so um, that, that will be an experience. We beat them last time in a crazy triple OT game, so hopefully we can get the win again. Yeah, and I heard that was the first um, triple overtime ever in Allen Fieldhouse. Well, in, I, I wasn't that's a fun that. fact. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it looked like an intense game way back when. I had a friend who also went there, and she said that it was just electrifying, and everyone was screaming. So it was definitely like a game to be at. But. Yeah. So hopefully this weekend's is fun. Hopefully KU gets the win. <laughs> Um, speaking of things coming up this weekend, it's Valentine's Day weekend as well. It is. Um, <laughs> it's the weekend of love. <laughs> yeah, so um, what kind of plans do you have for this weekend? I'm not really big of a Valentine's Day plan. I mean, I just am going to eat a lot of chocolate and wear red, I think. That's the basis of my plans. That's How about you? <laughs> this is your first Valentine's Day in America, right? Yeah, so uh, I mean, I couldn't really have any big plans because I'm so far from home. Um, do you have any expectations of Valentine's Day here? A lot of red and a lot of chocolate. Um, I'm hoping maybe that my roommate might buy me some. Um, maybe some Hershey I'll, Kisses. Yeah, that sounds good. I heard that's your favorite. It is. I um, love the Hershey Kisses. I saw some Australian chocolate available, so I might drop oh. the hint about um, that I do love some Australian chocolate and get him to buy me some of that as a present. I've never... Is Australian chocolate different from American chocolate? Not really. It's just I saw the brand when I was at Walmart. So that oh. was... It was Walmart little, has everything. Yeah, yeah, it was a little little slice of home for me to see um, just just normal chocolate, but with home branding. So that's been the experience. Um, and I mean, I, I'm not sure about the traditions in the U.S., so why don't you tell me a little bit about how Valentine's Day goes Valentine's in Day? Well, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's different for everyone. In middle school and elementary school, we always had, like, we would decorate these giant shoe boxes and, like, fill, um, write little notes out to our, like, crushes and everyone in our class and send them with, like, Hershey Kisses okay. or yummy chocolates and go around the room and just doing that. But now we just, you know, whatever floats your boat for Valentine's Day. Some people are 100% against it and other people are just like 100%. sending Valentine's Day kisses all around. So it just depends what kind of person you are here. Well, that'll be interesting to see <laughs> living on a floor of people that I've never met. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's going to be an experience. I know back home we do a lot more um, wide scale things for Valentine's Day. We try and give notes out to lots of people, not just our crush. And that's kind of fun. Um, 
kind of awkward when you get like 150 <laughs> responses to your letters. 150? And, yep. You get that many Valentines? <laughs> uh, no, like people oh. will hand out to everyone in a school. So like oh. in high school, um, we had a friend hand out letters or like little notes to everyone in the school and said, if you want to be my Valentine's Day, return the note to me. And we got about 150 notes back to him. So he wow. had 150 Valentines. So <laughs> That's something to make you feel happy about, I think. I, I know. It was a great day for him. Everyone had a Valentine. So it was a great experience. That's um, awesome. I don't know how he handled the dates, you know. Oh, yeah. A couple of seconds each. but that would, Yeah, you can't fit that in one year. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that was an experience. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, you point out we should be wearing red. I'm yep, going to have to find some red clothing. Always on the 14th. Red or pink. That's all you got to do to fit into Valentine's Day here. And so, yeah, so that's going to be exciting for me. And um, we're going to go to break now. But after the break, I'll be speaking to Andreas Guerrero, who's an exchange student from Venezuela, and about his experiences at KU. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back to Good Evening KU. I'm here with Andreas Guerrero, who's an exchange student from Venezuela. Yeah, start there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, what made you choose KU? Well, actually, I didn't choose KU. I, was, I applied for a scholarship with the U.S. Department of State. And they picked this university for me, luckily. I'm really liking it, and it's awesome. Lawrence is amazing. Its people is so warm, so, so amazing. Yeah, and I think I've had that experience as well um, coming here. Um, what's been the weirdest thing or the most different thing for you coming to KU? Different thing? I think the most thing, like, the thing that impacts me more is the most, is like the stop signs. <laughs> Have you seen the stop yeah. signs? I mean, they stop in every sign. We don't have that in my country. I mean, you don't even look at the stop sign in my country, and here they stop. The first two days that, that I was here, I, I actually stopped at the sign and just look how the cars stop there and just stare there like, like a foolish, but it was like, I, I couldn't believe it. They stopped there. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it's kind of the same back home. We don't really pay attention to the stop signs yeah. unless there's a police car around, in which case yeah. I'm sure we both do that. Um, but yeah, speaking of Venezuela, you were telling me some really cool things about the movie Up. Um, yeah, actually that movie is based on a national park back, back home. It's called Roraima Park and it's, it's like the biggest uh, waterfall in the world. Uh, the name of the waterfall is Angels Falls, and it's like a secret, a sacred place for the indi indigenous that live around there. Uh, when you go up, you cannot like be loud. You have to respect what the indigenous like. For them, those mountains are like gods and goddess. They're like laying down in the ground, and yeah, it's really spectacular. Yeah, and so obviously from the movie, I could gather that Venezuela. It was a pretty beautiful place. What other great things are there in Well, Minnesota? that's the thing about my country. We have like beautiful landscapes and scenarios from north to south, from east to west. And we have the Caribbean Sea all over the coast. That's all of all, all of our coast, the Caribbean Sea and uh, Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean. And I mean, you have a snow in, for, for example, in my college city, you have a snow 24, I mean, 24 seven. Yep. And we have the cable car, the largest cable car in the world that goes up uh, to approximately, approximately like 5,000 meters. And then you have like, we have like 380 something Icelands or all over the Caribbean Sea. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my country, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so coming back to KU for a bit, um, I know you're probably not a huge KU basketball fan, but We've got the game against Oklahoma this weekend, I know. and um, how, what do you think about that? Well, I think KU has a struggle in the road, and I think they need to win this game, and I, I know they will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a tough one, and I yeah. think you're coming to the Texas Tech game with me yeah. on the 27th, right? Yeah. How right. are you feeling about your first game? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm kind of, ne kind of nervous because some people have told me, like, you have to know some tradition stuff, and I don't know all the traditions, so I'm kind of nervous about that. 
Well, it'll be good that there'll be a group of us that, you know, don't know what we're doing together. So yeah. when <laughs> at least we'll be together not knowing what to do. <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess what other advice would you have um, for students who are coming to KU from all around the world? Like what's the, been the best thing about KU so the best that thing you want people to experience? It's people. I mean, I still don't get used to people la laughing at me, like not laughing at me, like smiling at me. When I'm walking, I'm just like walking and some people smile at me. I'm just like, okay, the people in Lawrence is so warm. So that's the best part. That's what I like the most here. Yeah, and so, I mean, um, we were talking earlier about the food in this country and um, I know we were talking about Mrs. E's and yeah. while a lot of KU students seem to not like Mrs. E's, <laughs> I know you and I share a different opinion. Back home, definitely. <laughs> I mean, you love Mississippi. You come from my university. They, the food in my university is not good at all. It's like, no. <laughs> in, instead, here you get to choose like different kind of food, different kind of regions. So it's way different. And we were also talking earlier about um, other food in this country outside of Idiot University. Um, what do you think about the difference between food in Venezuela and food in the United States so far? I think, uh, well, for example, if you want to go out here, for example, downtown, and you want some Latin American food, you don't get to choose that kind of food here. You just have like Mexican food. That's something like I don't get used to it yet. I mean, in my country, you get different kind of food, like American food, Arabian food. And here it's just like if you want Latin American food, it's just Mexican. <laughs> Well, that's obviously going to be, um, you know, something that you'll get used to. Yeah. Um, and I guess the other thing is, speaking about the dorms, um, did you have a roommate back home or is that a new experience? No, here? no, I don't have a roommate. I have my own apartment. Okay, so yeah. how's it been having a roommate so far? It's been great. He's quite nice. He's from China. We don't talk that much. I mean, we always, like, try to talk, but his English sometimes fails and it's quite struggling, struggling there. But ha has it been different adapting to having to like share yeah, a room with somebody yeah, else? Yeah, definitely. It's not the same. I really like like having my own stuff and it's hard to get used to new stuff, but definitely loving it. Like it's a new experience, but it's always great. Yeah, and so I know for me back home, speaking about rooms, like I like to be able to have room to throw stuff around and you know, really get rid of it. And so I guess that wraps up our time. We'll be swinging it over to news now when we come back after the break, and we'll see you soon. I'm Jessica Lawson. And I'm Julia Norda. This is your good evening KU News update from the, new, the USA Today. As expected, Bernie Sanders was a big winner in the New Hampshire primary. Sanders, who is from nearby Vermont, beat Hillary Clinton by more than 20 points on Tuesday. The victory was no surprise as Sanders' hometown is neighboring state Vermont. On the Republican side, Donald Trump was the winner with more than 25% of, 35 of the caucus. John Cash was second with just under 16%. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie finished with sixth place and is widely expected to withdraw from the race. In the wake of the last week's missile launch, North Korea remains in the news with the execution of its Army Chief of Staff. South Korean media outlets are reporting that Army General Ri Yong Gil has been charged with corruption and charges of pursuing personal gain. The proposed bill that would be removed that would remove gifted children from special education umbrella has been abandoned. A state representative from Hayes has proposed separating K-12 gifted programs from special education requirements and mandates. According to Lawrence Journal World, there are approximately 14,000 students in Kansas who are identified as intellectual individuals. The men's basketball team defeated West Virginia by 10 points last night in Allen Fieldhouse. Junior Landon Lucas had a career-high rebounds to pace the Jayhawks to a 75-65 to victory over the Mountaineers. The win creates a three-way tie for the first in the Big 12 with KU, West Virginia, and Oklahoma, all tied at 8-3. and three. KU plays at Oklahoma on Saturday. And finally, today is William Allen White's birthday. The KU School of Journalism marked the 148th anniversary of its namesake with a party this morning in Clarkson Gallery. Students who happened to be in the software plant were served a free slice of cake. 
That's going to wrap it up for our news update. Please stay tuned and after the break, we'll have Bella Without Borders. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back to this segment of Bella Without Borders. This week I have Daniel and we're going to talk a little bit about his winter break. So just to get it started, what did you do this break? So this winter break, um, KU Hillel had an um, opportunity for um, students at KU to travel to Bulgaria and Romania. Mm -hmm. So um, I applied and uh, fortunately enough was able to get in. It was actually fairly competitive. Oh, very so. Good. So if you could explain kind of for the audience, what is KU Hillel? KU Hillel is an um, organization on campus that um, really tries to um, tell, tell um, the community about Jewish life and kind of um, give everyone a little taste of what it's all about. Um, and they also provide um, students with a lot of, um, a wide array of uh, leadership opportunities. Mm -hmm. so. so in Bulgaria and Romania, kind of how was that like to travel with KU Hillel? Do you think you would have had a different experience if you were to go solo or? Um, I, I've traveled a lot on my own actually and i um, got to say traveling on my own, um, uh, I kind of get lost a lot. So it's kind of nice to be able to uh, travel with a group and kind of get everyone's, uh, get different perspective on, on the uh, experience that we all had, mm -hmm. so. So why did KU Hillel want to go to Bulgaria and Romania? Well, um, the Jewish Federation of Kansas City actually has a really strong relationship with um, the Jewish community in um, Bulgaria and Romania. Um, and so they, what they want to do is they want to send kids out there um, who are kind of our leaders back in the Lawrence community and um, to kind of be able to tell everyone what the Jewish communities are like there just because um, they, believe it or not, despite the distance, they do have a very um, close uh, and strong relationship. Oh, really? So. so what are, you know, those differences between here in America, the Jewish communities, and over there? So the interesting thing is, um, good question. Um, <laughs> the interesting thing is, is um, when, you, when people think about Jewish communities, they primarily think about um, the Jewish community in the United States because we're Americans, and then, um, of Israel, and then Israel, where mm -hmm. we all started. So um, it's kind of interesting to be like, go to Europe and kind of see, okay, you know, there's actually more than just the United States and, mm -hmm. and Israel. There's there's still Jewish life here, um, despite the fact that it's small um, from what happened in the Holocaust. There's still it's still a very uh, strong community. Mm -hmm. um, Bulgaria and Romania, despite the, the fact that they're um, neighboring countries, they're both actually very different. Um, it's not like driving over to our neighbors up north in Canada. So, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's fairly interesting. Um, the Jewish community in Sofia, Bulgaria is where we actually started. Um, it's, it's a more uh, concentrated um, community. And so you kind of just see how um, the money that's um, given to them from the Jewish Federation of Kansas City is used differently than um, the way it's used in Bucharest, Romania, and Brasha of Romania, mm -hmm. which is the two um, cities we tra travel to in Romania. And it's kind of just interesting since the Jews in Romania were kind of more um, spread out throughout the country. Mm -hmm. So so if you could kind of tell our audience what, if any at all, um, do you think the benefits are to support and connect with, you know, these kind of communities on a global scale? Um, to support? Um, do, you know, do you think it's a good thing to, you know, go over there and be introduced to these types of communities? Yeah, it's definitely, and I think a lot of um, different groups should really, really um, kind of, I think all students at KU should really um, maybe get involved with their faith or not even that, just explore different communities in the world. It really, um, it's a really, really great opportunity to grow and kind of see what's out there, mm -hmm. so. So did you enjoy your experience overall? Um, overall, I enjoyed my experience and the food was unbelievable too. So <laughs> I can never forget that. Oh gosh, what was your favorite? <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> uh, there's a lot. Um, they even took, they had their own twist on pizza. Um, mm -hmm. And they have a lot of um, traditional Bulgarian dishes and Romanian dishes that I, I don't really um, know what they are. Know no. what they are. They're just on my phone. Great. So maybe one day I'll ask Siri and she'll she'll let me know. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, Is there but, an app for that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you can make it up or something. Yeah, I hope so. All right. Well, so thank soon. you. Is there anything yeah. else you want to add? Uh, no, I think that's about it. I gotta say, um, going abroad, even with or without KU, um, I highly recommend it to to everyone um, in their college experience to go uh, see what's out there. There's a awesome. lot in this world. Will you so. return back to Bulgaria and Romania? Hopefully soon. Okay. <laughs> good. All right. It was good. good to be here. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming. We'll come back with the weather. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. This is Warren Sears with this week's edition of The Weather on Good Evening KU. Let's take a look at the almanac for today. Today we did, have, we did not have any record-breaking temps, but we did have a very comfortable 54 degrees. Uh, we are expecting a low of 22 tonight. Let's take a look at today's weather. As I said, we had a great day, 54 degrees, warmer temps today. Uh, the winds did die down for us a little. Um, and as we look for tomorrow, we expect temps lower, 39 degrees, partly cloudy skies, uh, with very calm winds. It'll be a pretty comfortable day, won't be too horrible. As we look into the five day, tomorrow, as I said, a high of 39 degrees, uh, a little warm up on Friday, partly cloudy, 45 degrees. As we go into the weekend, it's gonna be a lot, a lot cooler uh, Friday night into Saturday morning with a, only a low of 13, so it'll be very chilly, only warming up to about 30 degrees. As we look, into the early part of next week, we do have a nice warm-up coming to look forward to. All right, that is all we have for you on this week's edition of Good Evening KU. Thanks so much for tuning in. We will see you guys next Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Thanks for watching.